today we're going to be talking about how to find the volume by cylindrical shells. And in this particular problem, we've been given two functions, y equals 4x minus x squared and y equals 3. And we've been asked to find the volume enclosed by these two curves when we rotate that region around the line x equals 1. Now, when I first started doing these kind of problems, I'd always get confused. So I made a chart and that really helped me a lot. And the chart that I use is this one, and I have it on my website on my volumes by cylindrical shells page. But basically what it tells you is that you want to start with your axis of rotation. So you can be rotating around the y axis, which is the same as some line x equals something, basically a vertical line, right? The y axis is a vertical line or the line x equals something is a vertical line. Or alternatively, you could be rotating around the x axis or some line y equals something else and that would be a horizontal line. So you want to start with what is my axis of rotation? And in our problem, our axis of rotation is the line x equals 1, which means that we're going to be in this column here. So the line x equals 1 is a vertical axis of rotation. So that tells us that we need our functions in the form y equals f of x. Sometimes we're told to rotate about a line x equals 1, and we're given functions in the form x equals something. Well, you want to convert those into y equals something. You may need to convert them, but they both need to be in terms of y equals and then f of x. So you want to convert your functions. We already have ours in terms of y, so that's fine. This also tells us that our radius is going to be in terms of x. And the reason for that is because we're going to be taking slices of our volume that are perpendicular to our axis of rotation. You're always taking perpendicular slices perpendicular to the axis of rotation. Because our axis of rotation is vertical, we're going to be taking horizontal slices and horizontal slices will be in terms of x. So this is just a good reminder. We know that our cylinder is going to be looking roughly like this. It's going to be a vertical cylinder. And we know that our integral, most importantly, is going to be this one for volume. So the integral from a to b of 2 pi x, where x is our radius, 2 pi x, the whole thing is our circumference f of x will be our height and d of x represents thickness. If we had the other case here, we would have a completely different integral. Notice 2 pi y times g of y times dy with limits of integration c and d. So we've got our formula for our integral here already written down, so we shouldn't need to come back to this, but I just wanted to show you guys what I use that makes it easier for me. The integral we're, we're going to be using is um, this one for volume, which we saw in the chart. Now that we've kind of got ourselves oriented, what we need to do is draw a picture of our problem. It always helps to draw a picture of the problem. So we'll draw our coordinate axes here, x and y, and let's go ahead and label some points. We'll call this the origin and we'll mark off some points here, one, two, three, and four. So we'll call this four, and then we'll say one, two, three, three and four and call this four. So now we just need to graph these. Well, the line y equals three is really easy, right? That's the line through the point zero three. So that's the line there, y equals three. Then we need four x minus x squared. And four x minus x squared is going to look like this. And I'll let you guys graph it. But essentially, if you find x-intercepts, you'll realize that we're going to have an intercept here at the origin and an intercept here at the point 4, 0. We're also going to have the point 2, 4. That's the critical point there where the function changes direction. We also have the point 1, 3 here and 3, 3. So our function is going to be the parabola like this roughly. So now that we've drawn our region, what we can see is that we're going to be revolving this region here. We, we can see the region enclosed by the curves. We're going to be revolving it around the line x equals 1. So we can go ahead and sketch that in here, the line x equals 1, like this. And we're going to be revolving this figure around it, which means that the other side of the figure will look roughly like this. We'll have these points here. So we're going to have the volume of revolution like this. Now, we can go ahead and draw our 
cylinder, right, our approximating cylinder. Remember that our chart told us we were going to have a vertical cylinder. So it's going to look roughly like this. So we'll have the cylinder like this. It's going to be vertical like that. And that's roughly what our cylinder is going to look like, just like this. So that's a rough drawing of our cylinder. What we need for our formula are a couple of things. First of all, we need our limits of integration, a and b. Well, we know that our functions intercept each other here at the point 1, 3, and at the point 3, 3. So our limits of integration are going to be 1 and 3. This here is 3, 3, and this is 1. 3. So we know our limits of integration are going to be 1 and 3. We can also find that by setting these two functions equal to each other. So we can say 3 equals 4x minus x squared. We can factor out an x and get 3 equals x times 4 minus x. And so then we can see if we set these equal to each other separately, we'll either get 3 equals x or 3 equals 4 minus x which is going to give us x equals 1. So we have limits of integration of 1 and 3, so we know that. Then we need x, and x, remember, is the radius. We saw that from our chart. Well, the radius needs to be a perpendicular line to our axis of rotation. So we have a radius here. We can come out from the y-axis like this and indicate a radius like this. Keep in mind that this is an approximating radius because this cylinder is an approximating cylinder. Remember that with the volume by cylindrical shells method, we'll have this cylindrical shell that approximates the area of this portion and this portion, but then we'd have a slightly wider cylindrical shell that would approximate the area of this portion and this portion, and then another one that would approximate this and this, and we'd have an infinite number of cylindrical shells, some being very thin inside here that would approximate this area, and some being very wide that would approximate this area out here. So the radius is just the radius of any given cylindrical shell, not necessarily this one in particular. So the radius we just call x because the width of it here, since our cylindrical shell is vertical like this, the width of the radius, and if you just think of the radius like this, you know, a radius of r, the width of any radius is going to be x, but it's important to remember that because we're revolving the figure about the line x equals 1, the radius is actually x minus 1 because we know that this distance right here is 1, right? This distance is 1 because the axis of rotation is x equals 1, so this distance is 1. That means the radius of any given cylindrical shell will be x, the distance we drew earlier, minus the value of 1. So our radius is x equals 1, and we'll be plugging that in here for x. To give you a couple more examples, if our axis of rotation was x equals 2, our radius would be x minus 2. If our axis of rotation was the y-axis itself, or the line x equals 0, our radius would be x minus 0, which would just be x. So that's a standard problem where you have your axis of rotation as the y-axis and then your radius is just x. But when the axis of rotation is different, you have to remember to subtract whatever the axis is. So x minus 1, f of x is the height of our approximating cylinder. And the height of the approximating cylinder is just our upper curve minus our lower curve. So in our case, the upper curve is 4x minus x squared because this curve here, this curve here, is above the line y equals 3, this curve here. And so we have 4x minus x squared, which is the upper curve, minus the line y equals 3. So that f of x function will be 4x minus x squared minus the lower curve, 3, like that. So now that we have our values, we can go ahead and plug them into our volume formula. And we'll have the integral from our intersection points, 1 to 3 of 2 pi times the radius x minus 1 times f of x, so 4x minus x squared minus 3 times dx. So that's how we plug in our pieces, and now we just need to simplify and evaluate the integral. So we'll get 2 pi, we'll pull that out in front because it's a constant coefficient since everything inside here is multiplied together. 
and then we'll multiply x minus 1 times 4x minus x squared minus 3. We'll get 4x squared minus x cubed minus 3x minus 4x plus x squared plus 3 dx. And when we simplify that, we'll get the integral from 1 to 3 of, since the x cubed is a negative, let's go ahead and start with a 3 so we don't leave with the negative. We'll get 3, we have minus 3x and minus 4x, which is a minus 7x. We have 4x squared plus x squared, so plus 5x squared, and then we have a minus x cubed dx. Now we can go ahead and evaluate the integral. We'll get volume equals 2 pi times. We'll just use power rule for each of these, so we'll get 3x minus 7 halves x squared plus 5 thirds x cubed minus 1 fourth x to the 4. And we'll be evaluating that on the interval 1 to 3. So when we do this, we'll plug in 3 first, and we'll get 9 minus, 3 times 3 is 9, 3 squared is 9 times 7 halves is 63 halves, 3 cubed is 27, 27 times 5 is 135, so 135 over 3, and then 3 to the 4th is 81 times 1 fourth is 81 fourths, and then we'll subtract whatever we get when we plug in 1, which is just going to be 3 minus 7 halves plus 5 thirds minus 1 fourth. So I'll let you do the arithmetic, but I'd find a common denominator with 12, and what you'll get is 2 pi times 16 over 12 when you find a common denominator with 12, and then do the arithmetic, which is obviously going to give you 2 pi times 4 over 3, which is 8 pi over 3. And that's the volume of this region here rotated about the line x equals 1. So I hope you found that video helpful. If you did, like this video down below and subscribe to be notified of future videos.